हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर इम्तियाज हसन फ्रॉम जाम मिल्ले इस्लामिया टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ए मॉड्यूल फंक्शनल जीनोमिक्स अंडर द पेपर बायो इन्फॉर्मेटिक्स सो द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस कोर्स ऑफ द फंक्शनल जीनोमिक्स इज टू गिव यू द फॉलोइंग थिंग्स इन डिटेल दैट वट फंक्शनल जीनोमिक्स इज एंड वट क्वेश्चन दैट कैन बी एड्रेस इन दिस फील्ड ऑफ द स्टडी देन वी कैन डिस्कस द लिस्ट ऑफ द मेन टेक्नोलॉजीज यूज इन द फंक्शनल जीनोमिक्स एक्सपेरिमेंट एंड वट आर द अदर फंक्शनल जीनोमिक्स रिसोर्सेज एंड मोस्टली दी डिस्कस अबाउट द ऑनलाइन अवेलेबल रिसोर्सेज दैट कैन ईजली बी डन बाई यू पीपल इट सेल्फ सो बिफोर first we should describe what is the functional genomics the functional genomics actually analyzes all genes in a genome to determine their function and their gene control and expression so generally the gene is nothing gene is a simply a code of the either you can say the gene gene code like the atgc or if the protein code but for the layman it is nothing but if the order of or the sequence of the gene actually decides its function so the based on the sequence we can derive a large number of information in a gene and that's why the functional genomics come into the chapter so the functional genomics is a field of molecular biology that attempts to make the use of vast wealth of data produced by genomic and transcriptomic projects such as genome sequencing project mrna sequencing and describe the gene or protein function and their interaction so the function genomics refers to the development of application of global genome wide or system wide experimental approach to access gene function by making the use of information and reagents provided by the structural genomics so it's simply the derivation of gene function based on the this sequence similarity or the application of the uh, bioinformatics tool that's known as the functional genomics we discuss the basic concept of the functional genomics so before studying the functional genomics we should know how the gene sequences or genes are located or the organized so you can see here in the chromosome the dna are coil in the uh, coil in such a way that forming the supercoil region and uh, with the help of histones so you can see it from the chromosome to dna how it is organized so the these sites are for the hypersensitive sites for the is very sensitive for the dna digestion then the we can perform the reporter assay like then for example if you want to know the gene regulatory elements present in a protein in a gene sequences then it, for the dna replication sites especially the gene sites where the gene located what kind of transcript is formed and the computational prediction of the genes by using real time pcr so this is the basic concept of the genomics that the gene which encodes the protein and the gene it having the long regulatory elements then the cis regulatory elements especially the promoter for the transcription sites it's always located uh, five prime site of the gene and this gene forms the transcript which is further converted into the protein by the translation so this is the basic concept of the functional genomics that how the from the gene to protein how it went through we discuss what are the different steps involved from the gene to protein and what kind of bioinformatics tool used for the function prediction for example if you have the dna sequences it is located on the genome then it transcribe and converts into the rna that's the known as transcriptome that's the rna to messenger rna so it occurs through the alternative splicing messenger rna editing and the polyadenylation then this transcriptome is further converted into the proteome by the translation so the proteins are generated by translation of the messenger rna sequences into the ribosome and this at this stage the protein translation modification occurs and the compartmentalization occurs proteolysis occurs then modification occurs and finally this protein leads to the function so these are the central dogma of the biology that the genome gives through the transcriptome and that gives to the proteome and finally function of an any gene so around 30000 gene give right to 10 lakhs of the proteins and much more function into the biological system so to understand this complexity from the dna to protein we can use the functional genomics to understand this complexity and how this can be regulated and annotated 
we discuss about the prokaryotic gene model especially the open reading frame genes it's the small genome with the high density this is the first genome sequence genome of the homophilus influenzae that 85 percent genic it have the operons one transcript of the many genes no intron means one gene one protein and uh, open reading frames one open reading frames per gene and open reading frames begins with the start and end with the stop codons and the uh, information about the genome can be available on the TIGR website and NCBI website discuss about the eukaryotic gene model that's the splice genome it having the data box of the five prime site then the transcription initiation site like the five prime utr site then the introns then different introns and the exon like you can see here the exon one exon two exon three then the, the three prime site polyadenylation site three prime utr sites so the post transcription modifications occurs at the five prime cap poly a tail splicing then the open leading frame of the eukaryotic genome model is the different it's the mature mrna contains open leading frame all internal exon contains open leading frame through and the pre start and post stop codons are utrs and the multiple translates one gene many proteins via the alternative splicing so before going to the functional genomics we must understand the prokaryotic gene model and eukaryotic gene model we discuss about the expansion and clarifications like the open leading frame are the starts triplets stops and prokaryotic genes one per gene per ORF in the eukaryotic splice gene or ORF genes the exons are the remain after introns and have been removed and the flanking reports contains non-coding sequences 5 prime and 3 prime UTRs we discuss about the what is the necessity of the functional genomics so far we discussed about the gene information about of the prokaryotic and eukaryotic organism now we discuss that what is the necessity to need of the functional genomics so you can know from this slide that the different organism having the percent number of the gene like for a different number of gene like e coli having 4288 gene yeast having 6600 genes c elegans have 19000 gene drosophila having 12 to 14000 gene arabidopsis thaliana having 25000 genes mouse having 30000 genes and human having 30000 genes but the only the fraction of genes function has been predicted so far despite of the fact that they, these sequences are available from a long time for example human sequences only 10 to 20 percent information are inferred although its sequence was available in 2000 similarly for the mouse it was sequenced in 2002 and still 10 to 20 percent of the information are inferred so the functional genomics will not replace the time honored use of the genetics biochemistry cell biology and structure studies in gaining detailed understanding of the biological information but it help you to predict the function of the protein whose function is not determined so far in a well organized and well systematic manner so that's why the inclusion of functional genomics in the genomic information that helps to gain the functional insight of in genomic information so you can see here inside the how the annotation or the function prediction actually done you can see here the gene gene which is converted after transcription is converted into the unprocessed rna and then through the processing it converts into the mature messenger rna then through the translation it's converted into the nascent unfolded polypeptide chain which is subsequently folded into the three-dimensional structure of a protein and that is the basic functional unit so at different level different types of tools used for the functional prediction for example at the gene level or the genomic dna level ab initio gene prediction methods are utilized then the, at the rna level the comparative genomic prediction tools are utilized and at the protein level or the protein sequence level functional identification can be utilized so these are the different levels of the tools can be utilized to annotate the function of any given sequence using the functional genomics functional genomics can answer when and where the genes are expressed means in a biological system which region in what condition in what location of this uh, of the body and genes are expressed and what kind of gene are expressed then how gene expression level differs in various cell types and the states you can compare also 
then what are the functional role of the different genes and what cellular processes they actually participate if we can analyze the metabolic pathways or if you can analyze the protein bond interaction then we can able to find that what are the functional role of this particular gene and what cellular process they actually regulates then how genes are regulated where the active site of active genes promoter and in what in a particular cell type then we also know how do the gene and their products are interacting together like either the protein interacts or gene and gene interacts but we can determine through the function genomics that what are the proteins interact themselves and then how does the gene expression change in various diseases or the following the after the treatment so we can also compare that the at the starting of the disease then after the treatment do any changes occur all these analysis can be done in a functional genomics we can give the principle of the functional genomics that the functional genomics actually integrates information from various molecular methodologies to gain an understanding of how DNA sequences translate into complex information in a cell like the DNA to RNA to protein to the biological system. So it involves high throughput biological experiments then the high throughput technology like the next you know next generation sequencing technology to get the inform biological information which is converted into the using bioinformatics tool it is converted into the results and that is the for the results for the genes transcripts and the protein so this is the basic flow scheme of the functional genomics the way to assigning gene function is first is the assigning gene function experimentally. So the one approach is to decide determining the gene function is to delete the gene and observe the phenotype when that genes function are knocked out. For example, using a genome sequences, PCR primer are designed to construct an artificial li linear DNA deletion module and it consists of gene sequence upstream through the start codon. For example, is a canamycin marker gene should be there to see the antibiotic resistance and the g then the gene sequences as the downstream and including the stop codon so the amplified dna is transformed into the east and the g4041 resistant colony is selected these generated when the new dna replaces the gene of interest in a genome by homologous recombination so they now express canamycin instead of the gene under the study and producing the loss of function and the mutation. So the work is underway to systematically analyze by the knockout mutation of each gene or genome in of the yeast on any other organism to know the exact function of the gene by deleting the certain gene in a in particular organism. So each knockout must be screened for the possible phenotype change in every area of cell function making these studies a substantial undertaking. Knockout mutation analyzed in is to to date indicate about one third of the gene are essential, one third gene are non-essential but the but affect phenotype and one third gene show no significant change in the phenotype. So doing the knockout analysis we can determine if there is no effect of the knockout it means this gene is not essential if it is the, the organism surviving but having the difference in their phenotypic expression means it is the significant but it causes the significant changes and if the the organism is uh, if it is the essential then the mutate during the mutation this organism cannot survive so means that the knockout mutation is actually lethal that's why this gene is essential for the survival of the organism so the function the best way is to, of the function genomics is to do the knockout analysis of each individual gene and then we can find out whether this gene is essential non-essential or like that we discussed that how we can generate the functional genomics data so through the biological or experimental level we can create the knockout and then we can see the impact that of if you mm -hmm. knock out the particular gene or if you delete the particular ORF then what will be the consequence of the biological system. We discuss the technologies used in the functional genomics. There are many technologies used for the functional genomics such as microarray technology that used for the expression profiling to measure the expression of thousands of genes at once using oligonucleotide probes and designed from the transcript DNA or exon sequences across the genome. 
then the tiling micro arrays that's often used for mapping the transcription factor binding sites or the location of a genetic marks they use overlapping oligonucleotide probes and converting several megabytes of the genome into the sequences then the high throughput sequencing that's the RNA sequencing that's used to sequence the cDNA in order to get the information about the sample's DNA RNA content. Then the chip sequencing uses the chromatin immunoprecipitation which DNA sequencing to identify the protein binding sites in a DNA. You can see the basic flow of the whole exome or the whole genome sequencing project. You can see here is a genome sequence that contains the gene. Then the gene was gene recognition method used to find the different exons and introns, UTR sites, promoter regions, and then protein sequence can be translated from the genome gene sequence. And finally, the function of protein can be gained through the functional genomics methods. The other way is to see the mRNA expression, there is a messenger RNA expression. The genome sequencing makes it possible to determine all genes that are expressed in a cell by analyzing the total RNA transcript of a cell and its transcriptome. The transcriptome is an indicator of cell type and function. Similarly, the complete set of protein in a cell is the list of the proteome. So, analysis of correlated mRNA expression level enable us to establish the functional linkage by detecting the changes in messenger RNA expression in a different type of the cell or the different environment that a particular types of genes are co-expressed in such a situation. So, we can make the idea that the how these messenger RNA function in a certain conditions. We can see here the comparative gene expression analysis using DNA microarray technology. You can see here that the first the RNA are isolated from the two samples. One is the control sample and one is the experimental cell where you want to investigate. Then the cDNA probe generation then from the RNA the cDNA are generated and this then cDNA is probed labeled with the different probes for the hybridization and then it is hybridized to the microarray plate and wherever the hybridization occur then you can through the hybridization the image the DNA or the cDNA bind to their complementary DNA in the different wells of the plate and then through imaging we can measure the which genes are where it is located. So, it is a global approach for the bioinformatics and the functional genomics and proteomics. We discuss about the DNA microarray are the now widely used although it is still expensive it uh, currently use this technology for to see the changes in the drosophila gene expression using the morphogenesis like then the at the different stages of the morphogenesis what kind of the RNA are expressed then the human cancers and their characteristic pattern of a gene expression is transcription finger points that reverse distinction between the different types of the cancer then it is used for the screening of genetic diseases especially those resulting from one of many alleles a patient blood for example can be screened for hundreds of the possible mutation in the BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene associated with the breast cancer. It is also used for the optimizing drug therapies for patients using pharmacogenomics analyzing changes in transcription when the drug is present in the means of developing drugs and target specific mutations. Data is provided by next generation sequencing is like the DNA sequence that the genome based sequence yielding genomic deletion and the rearrangement copy number variation and a smaller region elements such as the SNP then the RNA sequence like the from the RNA sequencing that yields genome wide and quantitative information about the transcribed regions such as exon and subsequently their transcripts. The chip sequence one is the TF based chip that yielding genome wide information about the physical binding site of individual and TF of two to within the few hundreds of the base pair. Then the chip sequence two is the epigenetic chip that the DNA methylation or histone modification yielding information about the modification and the accessibility of the genomic region of the TFs and their other factors. So it's the actually analyzing the transcription factors and uh, in the genomic regions. We discussed the basic overview of the next generation sequencing myth strategies. You can see here the primary sequence analysis. This part describes the analysis steps that are based directly on the reads and are physically derived from the sequence comparison. 
Then the downstream analysis, this part differs from the three major application areas, genomic DNA sequence is genomic resequencing implied in genome-wide association studies. And finally, the meta-analysis allows the merging of several lines of evidences, NGS results and the other results, for example, proteomics and metabolomics into more complete description of underlying biology via network reconstruction, multiple correlation of various lines of evidence such as the histone modification, pole 3 binding and the transcription rates. The verification of prediction by several lines of evidence uh, and here the example of catheterin 5 are used so the catheterin 5 and nephrine 5 transcripts can be identified in the patient expression analysis in the different types of patients so the in the proteomics the functional genome uh, mix can be utilized and the proteomics is the cataloging and analyzing the proteome or the complete set of expressed protein in a cell at a given time. Proteomics focuses on which proteins are made and in what quantities and their interaction with the other proteins. The goals of proteomics is to identify every protein in a proteome using 2D page mapping, then isolating each protein and analyzing it by mass spectrometry and to develop a database with the sequence of each proteins. Then analyzing protein level at different cell type and stages of the development. So the protein identification and sequencing is a very complex and that's why the cellular genomics is involved in the identification of sequencing and, and of course the computational analysis is needed. So the proteomics stands to make major contribution to understanding the human disease and development of biopharmaceutically based diagnosis and the treatment. We discuss about the structural genomics because the structure is the one of the very important criteria for the function of the protein especially because the structure helps you to identify the activity of the protein. A structure will give you idea to develop the bioassay. It performs the biochemical purification. Then for example size or charge or hydrophobicity. For the structure genomics we first need to purify the protein then after the period or you can clone and express and the, get the recombinant protein and then the grow crystal to solve the structure and then the structure is utilized for the function analysis using the different tools and one of the most widely used tool is the pro function we discuss about the pro function that is the function derivation of function from the 3d structure so the how pro function works actually it first it searches the homologous sequences of the known function then from the sequence similarity you can predict the function at the sequence level then it search the functional sequence motifs that what are the motifs present in the particular sequence then the third level it searches against the three dimension structure similarity and then the especially for the it searches for that enzyme active site of the enzyme and how the active site are located in the three dimensional space you can see here and then the dna binding site if, if there is any dna binding site and where it is located so that can be used through the reverse templates then binding site identification then residue conservation analysis and finally the hth mot helix turn helix motif so th all these tools are implied in a one platform that's the pro function and from the pro function you can get directly information from the structure we discuss about the very commonly used tools for the bioinformatics that helps in the functional genomics the one is the sequence analysis tools that's used for the gene prediction protein sequence analysis comparative genomics family database and annotation then the structural genomics in which the structure prediction and function annotation can be done and the third is the data integration in which the large gene expression analysis protein protein interaction and intracellular protein localization can be done now the question is arises that how the bioinformatic tools are utilized it can be utilized to finding the gene within the genomic sequences then aligning sequences in a database to determine the matching predicting a structure and function of the gene products, describing interaction between genes and gene products in a cell, between the cells and between the organism, 
then by considering phylogenetic relationship. So the annotation begins a process of assigning function to the gene, especially proteins coding regions using computer algorithm to search both strands of ORF introns complicate analysis of the eukaryotic genes. And finally, the ORF exists in all size and not all the in all encodes protein. To focus the sequences most likely to encode proteins, a minimum ORF size is arbitrarily set for the shorter sequence. So these are the ways through which the functional genomics can be worked by using the different bioinformatics tool to annotate the function of a gene. We discuss about the functional prediction process or the gene annotation process. So you can simply have the gene, the gene sequences and then the different annotation annotators are used. These annotators are BLAST which is based on the similarity search, FASTA it is based on the similarity search, then signal peptide, signal P prediction, signal peptide prediction helps to identify the whether, whether this protein is secretory or not. Then TMHMM it is used for to predict the Try the helixes in the protein, then PFAM gives you the idea about the protein function or family and the prosite helps to identify the motive. So these are the annotators used for the function assignment of the protein. We discuss about the homology searches to assign the gene function. So what actually do computer do? Computer are used to find the homology between the sequences in a database. For example, BLAST search. And the similarity reflects the evolutionary relationship and often shares the function. So if the higher the sequence similarity, it means similar the function. And either DNA or amino acid sequence can be searched, but the amino acid sequence yields better information than the DNA sequences since there are 20 possible matches in the protein sequences rather than four sequences matches in the gene sequences or the DNA sequences. And homology methods, search methods are often convincing matches found due to the part of the limitation of the current database and sometimes matches are found only at the domain level when the region of the new protein matches protein domains in the database. So it provides clues for the new protein's function. For example, if you have protein sequences, you know that protein is having X function. But if you go for the homology search, you can also find the certain other domains are present in a, the, that sequences. And by that way, the new information or the new function can be assigned to this protein using homology search based search methods. We again discuss about the homology search to assign the gene function. It's uh, as the database grows, so the knowledge of the gene function is increasing. About 30% of genes have the known function, and of the remaining 70% of the open DD flames, 30% encodes a protein that either has homology to a protein of known function or has domain related to the functionally characterized domain. However, the 10% are if you end there's the function unknown genes they have the homologous in the database but function of the homologs are unknown and these groups of homologous genes of unknown function are orphan family 30 percent of orf have no homology in a database and these include seven six to seven percent that may not actually encode the proteins that remainder may represent that gene known only in east and the single orphan so the every genome sequence contains function unknown genes but as the database are expanded the problem should be decreases because the sequence similarity help us to assign the function of genes of unknown function by using the several bioinformatics tool or the function annotation tools you can see here the basic distribution of the predicted open leading frames in the genome of yeast and you can see here that the in the green color in the light green color homologs to experimentally characterize the function in the dark green it is the recognizable motif or the weak homologs in the sky blue color genes with the homologous of the unknown function means the genes are known but it is the showing similarity with the unknown protein of genes of the unknown function and in the dark green they are the genes without any homolog so orange the genes are experimentally carried so the whole genomes are distributed into the different forms in the or based on the function that a certain percent of the genes function is still unknown and it needs to be predicted using the increase in the number of tools and increase the number of the website that helps to predict the function of the protein and thus the functional genomics can be utilized to predict the function of genes of unknown function
so now you are already familiar with the functional genomics so let's summarize the functional genomics it's the genomic attempt to understand the complex relationship between genotype phenotype on a global scale using high throughput technologies such as the microarray and high throughput sequencing the computational method of function prediction have facilities to for the rapid identification of the hidden function in a protein which have the potential therapeutic which is maybe the potential therapeutic target and may play a significant role in the better understanding of the host pathogen interaction so the function genomics is uh, may utilize the structure analysis to predict the new function then the extent to protein function from the genomics can be determined then it's finally it's the multidisciplinary functional genomics approaches are used to elucidate the mechanism underlying fundamental cellular processes to identify the genes involved and to decipher the biological function in a living organism.